Good morning to all of you. Welcome back to the Namaste Experience. As always, it's wonderful to have our dear sister Victoria with us. This is her last day on this trip of being here with us live. She'll be back up here on the screen. You want to say anything before we start? I just want to say it's literally been heaven on earth. So I truly thank you all, everyone on Zoom too and in person, that we're two or more gathered in recognition of being the same, the same in every way the same, full of light, full of love, that there is nothing to do but celebrate that. So thanks, everybody. And that's all we've really done here, isn't it? Is to celebrate. We celebrate what we share every morning in the prayer for the, the uh, awakened. I am awake now. There's nothing else that I want. Everything else is dissolved. Everything else has faded away. And we just stay there in that vortex of one. We don't have to get spun out and go in this direction and try and seek and receive something else. We're no longer about getting the perfect relationship or having enough money or property or career. All of those things have been just released. We find ourselves in this vortex of one. And it is passionate. Mm -hmm. It has to be passionate. We're not here for a lukewarm mm -hmm. oneness. We're here for the the real thing. It needs to be hot. Helping in the passionate present and purpose. And here we are right now in this passionate purpose. Ah, doesn't that feel good? And the, so much of this is about the extension of our love toward the divine. However you perceive that. But the question becomes, who is it that we love? How do we love God? And of course, the answer is so simple. We love the divine through each other. Through each person that we come in contact with, every person that we meet mm -hmm. is the beloved. So as we begin our session, I wanted to share something with you that I've never shared before because I didn't really even... No, I had it until recently. I found this on a hard drive. Every once in a while, I'll record a song or do something, but then forget about it. I'm sure Scott has the same experience. And then you discover it. It's like, wow. And this was a song that I recorded at least 20 years ago in London. And it is called, It Is You That I Love. But before I share the song, I want to share a little something from a book that most of you are probably familiar with, The Prophet by Cahil Gibran. And he talks about this so beautifully, especially in the way that we work. He says, what is it to work with love? It is to weave the cloth with threads drawn from your heart, even as if your beloved were to wear that cloth. It is to build a house with affection, even as if your beloved were to dwell in that house. So with this, with these words, I want to kind of debut or share this song and video, because I think it's so appropriate to everything that we do here. So. There we go. One second. drawn from your heart even as 
as if your beloved were to wear to build Hope you like that. It is you that I love. I remember many, many years ago, um, probably not long after I wrote that, 
I was in Assisi and I had a group there and a friend named Karis, who was an American who had married an Italian woman and was living there in Italy. They had a, a little girl. She was probably four at that time. And though she could speak a little bit of English, it was mainly an Italian girl. So, uh, But I remember we would sing that song together and, and we would all sing, it is you that I love. Okay. <laughs> One of the fun things about life in Mexico, you just never know. So anyway, I was talking about this little girl who couldn't speak very much English, but we would sing this song over and over and chant it. And then one day I, I I heard that little girl, she was playing or doing something and she was just sitting there singing, it is you that I love, you that I love. It, it's a, it's a, just a line that gets easily caught in your, your mind and, and you find yourself singing it most of all, and hopefully you, you find yourself doing it. You find yourself looking at the people around you and just loving them and knowing that this is the beloved in front of me right now. This is the Christ. I've often said that the simplest, most impactful way that you could be, come into this experience is just spend some time every day looking at people and knowing who they are, seeing them as they really are, or as God loves them, loving them as God loves them, seeing them as God sees them, as the divine. You find yourself beginning to be filled with that same energy. So this idea of doing everything as if it's the beloved, your beloved, you might think of that as a beloved partner, a beloved child or grandchild, or just the divine, whatever it is, do everything as if you're doing it for the beloved. Such a simple teaching, but I think so profound, so important. So Vicki, what do you want to say about that? So Brother James, I want to say what a well done job, bravo. Thank you. <laughs> and you know, Khalil Gibran is one of my countrymen, and he spent a lot of time in Boston. And um, I don't know any particular stories, but I do know that, you know, I'm probably, um, well, I guess I'm second generation Lebanese in this world. But one of the traits of most cultures, indigenous cultures all over the world, they know to do everything wholeheartedly. I mean, with everything you've got whether it's plant a row of corn or put on a feast or build a shack or a house, do it with everything. One day it reminded me, uh, we had restaurants and at one point I was living in a big house with my whole family and my father would wake me up at five in the morning, kid, get up, get up, gotta go to work, gotta get, go open the restaurant, get up. And I say, oh daddy, I'm too tired. And he'd say, kid, if you're not excited to get up, better you stay in that bed and keep those doors locked. You're gonna ruin business if you go and you don't wanna go. And he was right, he was right. Later, I'd bring him breakfast when in, at a later time, both my parents were home and they were staying in bed a lot upstairs. <laughs> and I'd bring breakfast and I'd be, and every day, same breakfast, every morning, 7 a.m., get me in there with the tray and I'm up so it was fun. But if I didn't go in literally 100% with a smile, you get out of my room, kid, and don't you come back until you know how to smile. And he wasn't being um, unkind. He was being kind. He was being helpful. If you can't serve that breakfast 100% with all your heart, get it out of here. It'll make me sick. <laughs> he was right. Because... It isn't the food, it's the love in the food, the love that we do everything with. And if we are wholehearted in everything we do, I think that's probably the greatest gift I received from both my parents and from a culture that did everything, farming and entrepreneuring and everything else. I'm the baker's daughter. You, you, It's like baking all day long, all night long, you learn you got to be totally present, do with all your heart. But then what happens when we live with all our heart, 
everything and everyone becomes the beloved. Everyone, everyone. You can't wait for who's going to come in and have your first cup of coffee or your first salad or your first donut or your first whatever. Because when because love is without opposite. We are without opposite. We have maybe come into an imaginary identity, but it doesn't change the fact that we are the light and love of everything, of all of creation. And we bring it up into our experience when we put, put ourselves wholeheartedly in anything and hopefully in everything. And then the truth is life is fun that way because everything responds because we're only extending love. And so love bounces right back at you. <laughs> so it's a way to live in celebration, but everything wholehearted. And Louis was right, my dad. Kid, if you can't get out of bed and be excited to go there, you stay in bed because he's right. You'll ruin business. And we ruin our lives. Our lives are our whole, actually they're not our business. Our lives are not our business. That's what I found out. Nothing is my business except this moment, wholeheartedly right here, right now with all of you guys in Zoom land and all of you guys here that we have joined to be wholehearted with only love. Can you see my shirt? Oh, only yeah. God, only now. That's all it is, simple, but it's in everything. And when it isn't, that's when it's time. Where's Mary? Go take a rest. <laughs> Go take a rest. Rest and let that wholeheartedness get restored. That's let that wholeheartedness and that willingness to be wholehearted come back. I would say for me, it's probably the simplest and greatest. I had a great example all around me. And I have a great example today also all around me. Thank you. So the teaching of wholeheartedness as opposed to half-heartedness. Mm -hmm. We know what it feels like to be half-hearted, to do something half-assed, halfway. It's never really done. We're never giving our all to it. And isn't that the key to give our all to every moment, to give all to all? Now, from a human perspective, that may sound impossible. How are we going to possibly give all of our energy, all of our focus to one thing? And it's true, and in a human level, we can't. But it's the desire, the longing to do so, because we know that this is the key to be wholehearted. How do we apply that to a place like Namaste Village? Well, I hate to say it, but, but if you're not feeling it, don't even come to session. <laughs> Hopefully you're here because you feel wholehearted about what you're receiving and what you're giving and what you're experiencing, all the love and the energy that's here at this village. This is why so often when people come here to Namaste Village for the first time, they say, when I first walked in that door, I walked through that gate and came in, I felt something. I felt the energy. How many of you felt that when you first walked in? everybody's got their hand up. Once again, there's this vortex of one, this vortex of love. But we have to give ourselves wholeheartedly to it. You can't be throwing yourself into the current and holding back at the same time. If you do, I've used this example many times before, if you're in a river and you're holding on to a tree right there at the side of the river, afraid to let go, you're going to be bashed against side or the other rocks or trees to the point that you're you're black and blue just let go just let the river take you the river has a wisdom that you don't understand at this moment but you trust so be wholehearted about everything especially in the way that you see and serve the beloved every action when when jet and luis make food over here with with Rosie and they're I know they're doing it wholeheartedly you can see it you can feel it with them that's why people come here they want to just have a meal because they feel that they are they're cooking these meals for the beloved 
however that shows up in the moment. So we have a few extra minutes here, and I'm going to invite Scott to come on up and to wrap this up and, and just spontaneously join with the song about the beloved. Mm. Want to do that? Sure. All right, come on. I'm going to adjust this. And we get the <clears throat> stand for you. In this chair right here. You hand me the microphone. Thank you. Can you lift up your legs? Everyone, everything is my beloved. This I sing. Everyone, every mosquito. Is the Holy Spirit incognito? If I don't feel it, let me see it bend till I regenerate enthusiasm and get out of my head. today in this here song we say farewell to one who's been with us all along but her body goes from Mexico to scream we say thank you, Vicky, for waking up from this dream and being simple and true. Blessing us with hugs and food. You feed us every day. In a graceful way, by the way you play, lighthearted each day, blessings on your journey, wherever you roam, it doesn't really matter where your body is you abide in heaven is your home heaven is our home no one's alone very nice wow thank you scott and that we all share the same feeling vicky thank you so much for joining us here and you'll always be with us you'll always be part of this family and all of you as well thank you so much for being here those of you who come every day once in a while this is your first time it doesn't even matter you're all part of this holy family so thank you and to this we say Amen. 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 Good to see you, Akash. We love you. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Oh, and Bonnie, hello to you as well. Bye now.